Welcome to lecture number four. Let us start piano. We will reload our usual Boeing 787 bass line and move on to a discussion of flight maneuvers. A flight maneuver is any arbitrary flight segment with a specified initial state and clear rules that stipulate how it is to be flown and under what condition it is meant to finish. You can string together any number of such segments to form a sequence and you can extend that all the way up to modeling the whole flight. You can save, iterate, edit, remove or add segments, step through, rerun or rewind your way through any such sequence. Finally, Piano can generate a complete flight sequence automatically based on its standard range calculations for a design mission or for any off-design mission. This gives you the maximum level of detail and lets you examine the effects of making all kinds of changes in fine resolution. So let's start with some simple maneuvers. As an example, this is an all engines takeoff to screen height. Initial mass is MTOW, about 227 tons. Initial altitude 35 feet, delta ISA of 0. Airspeed is all engines takeoff or V3, which is calculated by piano appropriately. The configuration is with takeoff flap at 15 degrees. All engines are operative and the carriage is up. And the thrust is set to maximum takeoff rating. And our stop condition is to stop when the altitude is equal to one and a half thousand feet. So we have our output report. This gives the initial conditions, the maneuver endpoint conditions, altitude, time, distance, fuel burn, etc. And a history. Another simple preset example. A final approach at normal landing weight, which Piano can calculate from the basic mission, starting at a thousand feet, V approach with landing flap at 30 degrees, all engines operative and the carriage is down, and we have sufficient thrust to match the flight path of minus three degrees, which corresponds to an ILS approach, and we stop when the altitude is equal to 35 feet or 50 feet or whatever we decide. We don't have to start with any particular preset like this. We can just set up our own arbitrary conditions. Say we want to start at mid-cruise and we can look at the altitude versus mass plot for the aeroplane. Mid-cruise might be somewhere around 190 tons and say 38,000 feet. We select the initial mass. We can actually select mid-cruise from here and Piano will calculate the approximate value, 186.4 tons. But let us say we want to specify 190 tons. Our altitude, 38,000 feet. ISA conditions. Airspeed, Mach number for 99% max SAR. That would be the LRC Mach flaps up, undercarriage is up, all engines are operative, thrust is set to maintain level cruise, which piano will calculate as necessary, and our stop condition will be when time elapsed is 10 minutes. So now we are running at Mach 0.85, 217 knots calibrated. Let's call up the dialogue again and let us say that we want to examine a number of different options. So we'll take the Keep Dialogue Open box here. And if I click OK now, we get the same output as before, but the dialogue stays open. We can now pick a different airspeed. Economy at Cost Index, for example. If you're not familiar with Cost Index, Cost index reflects the relative importance of time-dependent cost to fuel cost. Individual operators will set their own values. 
A cost index of zero means that only fuel cost matters. A large cost index means that time costs matter more. Remember, in the first lecture I cautioned about the interpretation of costs and this caveat applies just as well to cost index. Anyhow, setting cost index of zero, that would actually correspond to maximum range crews. We are doing Mach 0.832 roughly. I can change to cost index of 50 and we, we are up to Mach 0.842. Let's change to 100 and let us say that this time I will travel over a longer distance. Now staying at one altitude over 3000 nautical miles is not very desirable but let's say you have to. And now I can see that the Mach number starts at 0.847 and actually increases until by the end we are at Mach 0.852 which makes sense if you think about it as the fuel flows are decreasing and I can go back to 99% max SAR run it over the same distance and this time we start off at Mach 0.85 and the Mach numbers are decreasing which makes sense again because we want to operate somewhere near optimum CL. Let us now start creating a sequence. Exactly the same way. We specify 190 tons, 38,000 feet, 99% max SAR, high speed aerodynamics, all engines operative, undercarriages up, maintain level crews until our mass reduces to 189 tons and this time instead of clicking OK I will click on Start Sequence we have now flown our segment and we have ended up at 189 tons over here and the dialog is now shown again the mass and the altitude are now calculated and you no longer have any control over them. Let us now set a different speed at a cost index of 50. Stop condition when distance covered is 100 nautical miles and click on run segment 2. So this has run our second segment and it's now waiting again to define the third segment and you can see we have done just over 200 nautical miles by now and our Mach number reduced from 0.85 in the previous segment to 0.842 so Piano has added an adjustment for the deceleration between the two segments and let us say that now we decide to start a descent so we reduce thrust to idle for the airspeed we will keep the same Mach number and as the aircraft is descending we will expect the CAS to increase at the moment it's 269 and we will stop when the CAS is equal to let's say 300 knots run segment 3 so segment 1, segment 2 with the deceleration between them and then segment 3 and you can see that we have got down to 33,178 feet and our CAS went from 269 to 300 but let us say I've changed my mind and I actually want to come down at 310 knots so I can rewind and replace this with 310 it says down here that segment 3 has been deleted and now I can run it again run segment 3 so this is now our profile 31,694 feet 310 knots 
is our endpoint for the moment and now we will keep the same CAS still at idle and we will stop when the altitude is equal to 10,000 feet I can continue with the descent or do any kind of other maneuver but let's say that I am finished now so I click on finish and we have our final sequence we ended up at about 296 nautical miles and 187.7 tons suppose I really wanted to end up at exactly 188 tons I can iterate the sequence until the mass at the end of the sequence is 188 tons and what I will do is I will iterate around the distance for the second segment so this bit here just before initiating our descent and currently the stop setting for this segment number two is stop when distance is 100 nautical miles I will vary this setting between 1 mile and 200 miles until the mass at the end of sequence is 188 tons so here we have 188 tons distance is now 276 nautical miles let us say that I also want a total distance of 500 nautical miles iterate sequence total distance 500 and what I will vary this time is the initial mass at the start of the sequence which we specified as 190 tons and I will tell it to vary this between 190 and 195 tons and now we have our total distance 500 nautical miles our end mass 188 tons if we are happy with the sequence we can now save it I will call it untitled and we can reload this at any time we can even run the sequence with a completely different aircraft changing settings along the way as necessary so what I will do is I will load an A350 there's one here and simply say rerun sequence now we will start at a different weight and maybe change other values along the way but the overall setup can be retained so if I look at the mid cruise weight for this aeroplane it's about 222 tons let me specify 230 tons 38,000 feet 99% max SAR Mach number same conditions and let's stop when we get to 229 tons hit return to get the next segment a cost index of 150 over 50 nautical miles descent at 310 knots again and get down to 10,000 feet again so I now click on keep the modified sequence and I can go through the same process of iterating it to match a particular final weight and a particular distance or I can simply clear all this out revert to my 787 reload our sequence that we have stored on file and I can run it uninterrupted 
and we are back to 500 nautical miles and an end mass of 188 tons. It should be clear that with this amount of flexibility comes some responsibility. For example, when we set up the flight maneuver, our combination of choices must make sense. If I set up speed to be maximum in level flight and the thrust setting to be idle, then piano will complain. Any iterations that we choose to do may need sensible upper and lower bounds to converge. For example, our choice of weights must be feasible, bearing in mind the results of previous segments. And the overall logic of the sequence must also hold together. For example, we made sure to first set up a final crew segment in a way that gave us our required final weight before then iterating for the required total distance. Next, we will look at building complete flight sequences automatically. Let's first remind ourselves of the basic range calculations. Piano already uses detailed step-by-step -step analysis when it's doing these standard range calculations. But processing speed is important, so appropriate assumptions are made for allowances, step sizes, accelerations, etc. There are parameters that let you control some of these, like the time allowances. For example, takeoff time or approach time. Flight sequences let you focus more on detail and on flexibility and processing speed is less important. Overall resolutions are higher and for things like takeoff and approach, fuel burns are now calculated in full, not based on fixed time allowances. We will build a sequence for the design range. Let's go back to the beginning. It has generated the maneuver sequence from the basic range calculations. There is a summary of the 15 segments that are used in the sequence. Starts off with some taxi out and takeoff calculations, and then the actual in flight maneuver segment number one starts here. And at the end, we have the summary a block distance of 7728 nautical miles, times and fuel burns, and this is brake release gross weight, that is landing gross weight. So the agreement is very close, 7,728 nautical miles against 7,725. I will now rerun step by step through the entire sequence to see how Piano has done this. So we start off with an initial mass, 227704, which will have been calculated at the end of the actual takeoff run. 35 feet, screen height, V3, takeoff flap, 15 degrees, all engines operative under carriage is already up. Maximum takeoff rating, and we stop when we get to 1500 feet. And I will simply be hitting return here. Next segment 250 knots, reduce the thrust to maximum climb rating, and we will stop when we get to 10,000 feet. There is an acceleration adjustment, which you can see here as well. Now we switch to 306 knots, still maximum climb rating, and we will stop when the Mach number is equal to 0.835. We've got up to 31,850 feet, and the Mach has gone from 0.55 to 0.835. At the end of segment 3. Segment 4, keep the same Mach number now still maximum climb rating, and we will stop when the altitude is equal to 36,000 feet. 
and I can introduce changes if I want to. Say, for example, I attempted to get up to 43,000 feet, which of course it will not be able to. Then it tells me I can't. But if I want to get up to 33,000 feet, I can do so. And then change my mind, rewind, and get back to 36,000 feet. Segment 5, we are now keeping Mach 0.85, thrust to maintain level flight, and stop when ready to step up by 2,000 feet. That's an RVSM step up. And this point is automatically calculated by piano. Next segment. We have now reached this point and we are going to step up. So keeping the same Mach number, the thrust is increased to maximum climb rating and stop when the altitude changes by 2000 feet. So that's our first step. Then level cruise again until ready to step up by another 2000 feet. Repeat the step up and then next cruise segment and then the final step up in this case our VSM rules again 3000 feet step up and the final cruise segment which will now conclude when a certain mass has been reached which is the one calculated by piano iteratively to get everything right at the end of the mission in terms of reserves and landing weight so now we are at the top of descent and we will come down at Mach 0.835, thrust set at idle, and we will stop when the CAS is 306 knots. And then we will keep 306 knots until we get down to 10,000 feet, still at idle. Decelerate to 250 knots and get down to one and a half thousand feet and we will finish off with a straight in final approach at V up landing flap 30 degrees under carriage down match a flight path of minus three degrees for the ILS and stop when the altitude is 50 feet there's also a box called loiter over here which has been ticked and that simply signifies that piano should not take into account the distance covered in this segment. And we've reached the end of the sequence. If I had made any changes and wanted to keep them I would have simply clicked here, keep the modified sequence. I can keep the original sequence. Next, let us run an off-design mission. Let's say 3000 nautical miles, that's our standard mission calculation. Block fuel about 27.8 tons. And if I build the sequence, select mission at range from here. It shows the same dialog for the off-design mission. I click OK. And that is my full sequence. We've now been able to go up straight to 40,000 feet and then 43,000 feet, 3,000 nautical miles, and our block fuel burn about 27.7, 27.8 tons. So it is just as simple to build a sequence for any kind of off-design mission. Let's say we want to make some changes to the in-flight sequence. And specifically, I decide that I want to introduce a segment at the end of the descent and just before the final approach, so at the end of segment 10, which will allow the aircraft to just hold for two minutes with some intermediate flap setting say for the purposes of lining up. Our in-flight fuel burn is at the moment 27.4 tons. Let's bear that in mind and let's see what happens after I make the changes. So I can start off by selecting Add Extra Segment immediately after Segment 10. 
and define it airspeed for minimum drag with an arbitrary flap setting of 15 degrees under carriage down thrust to maintain level flight and stop after a time of two minutes and we don't want to take credit for this distance and before I add that segment let's also remember that the end mass would ideally have to be 146463 again to match the exact current value so we add this and if I rerun the sequence uninterrupted I will of course have ended up at a different end mass so I need to iterate again mass at end of sequence I want it to be 146463 and to do that I will change the end of segment 7 which is the final cruise segment anywhere between 146 tons and 148 tons so now we have indeed got the right end mass our distance is no longer exactly 3000 nautical miles a very small difference we are now at 2979 but let us iterate again and this time I will iterate our initial mass at the start of the sequence in order to get a total sequence distance of 3000 exactly current initial mass is going to be iterated between 173 tons 173 tons and 175 tons And now we are finished, we have the right end mass, we have the right distance, 3000 nautical miles as before. Our fuel burn is now 27.6 tons roughly, it was 27.4 before. So our new sequence finished and we can just as before go and save it on file and use it again later. So I hope this has shown you the power and flexibility of flight maneuvers and I will pause here. In the next session we will start the process of defining new plane files from scratch. We will begin with a very simple example of a hundred-seater.